This morning I was working on a wax up. So I was waxing up this molar right here. It is, it looks pretty short, but that's just because when I put both arches into occlusion, it looks pretty short or it's just pretty short to begin with. Um, so the reason why I'm waxing it up was because this tooth had a root canal done and a lot of tooth structure was lost. So under the wax, there's not much tooth structure there. But this tooth is going to get crown lengthening in order to be able to restore the tooth with a restoration and it's going to need a crown. So this Thursday, I'll be doing a rough crown prep along with doing post and core buildup and I need to be able to send the patient home with a provisional crown, with a temporary crown. So in order for me to make the temporary crown since there was not much tooth structure there, is to wax up the tooth and then I took a putty of the tooth so now I have like an impression right here and then I will pour this stone like material called plaster into this putty and then I can rough prep that new stone model like with the burr and then I can pour acrylic into this putty and then put it onto the stone model and fabricate a rough shell, uh, temporary crown restoration for the tooth. Uh, and the reason we do this is to save us some chair time. So when we have the patient in the chair, we don't have to waste so much time. I have like a temporary crown already made and I just have to adjust it basically um, and make it fit the margins that I'll prep that day. So that's what I'm working on. And then today in the afternoon, I am assisting my partner. He has a patient. I'm not exactly sure what we're doing, but I will look it up. And then after our patient, I'm meeting up with my treatment planning group because we are going to review our presentation that we're presenting tomorrow. And yeah, I'll keep you guys updated. Update, it's 5 p.m. I just got home. Today with our patient, all we did was a treatment plan update and that's all we did. The patient is gonna go to grad pros because they need too many implants. So that was that, it was pretty quick. And after the appointment, since it was so quick, I worked on my shell provisional and I actually brought it home with me. This is my pressure pot. I prepped the plaster and then I poured acrylic into the purple putty and put it on the plaster to make the shell. So now um, I'm taking the acrylic and the plaster out of this pressure pot. The pressure pot helps it harden, helps the acrylic harden. I'm hoping this works out because I don't really get a second chance unless I wanna go back to school tomorrow. Or I guess I can do it on Wednesday because I don't need this until Thursday. Normally you would do this in the sim lab, but we're not allowed in the sim lab anymore. Okay. All right, this could work. So I have a shell here. Now I have to remove it. So here's the shell, it came out fine. Since I don't have my hand pieces here, I can't fix it up right now. But to, on Wednesday when I get to school, I'll trim all of this off and just relieve the internal because Actually, you know what? I'll relieve the internal the day of because who knows how it, how it will go, but here it is. Here's the shell. Good morning, it is Tuesday. Today I have an entire day full of Zoom classes. I'm wearing scrubs um, on top and then normal pajama wear on the bottom. I'm wearing a scrub because at 10 a.m. I'm giving a presentation with my group. It's a treatment planning seminar and yeah, I don't wanna be judged for wearing pajamas on top because they call you out like that. <laughs> At 8 a.m. today, before the treatment planning seminar, I have PBL. I have not looked at the case yet. It's like 10 minutes before 8 a.m. And then right after PBL, I'm meeting up with my treatment planning seminar group around 9.15 to quickly go over our presentation. And then 10 a.m., we're doing our presentation and watching everyone else's presentation. And then at 12 p.m., I'm meeting up with a different group. It's also a PBL type style case, and we have to 
like make a PowerPoint slide on what we learned. I don't know, it's kind of weird because this is the first time we're doing it, so it's kind of confusing. And then I have one more PBL class at 2 p.m. today. This is the first time I have two PBL classes in one day. All right, I just finished with my first PBL class and on to my second Zoom session of the day. I'm supposed to be meeting with my treatment planning group. Let's see if they're on Zoom right now. Hi, oh, I just finished PBL. Very nice setup. Um, <laughs> I wore my scrubs because last time everyone was wearing scrubs. I didn't what? want to get called out. <laughs> he reports frequent snacking and a diet high in sugars. He has a core score of four and he's not taking any medications. I logged on to treatment planning seminar a little bit early just to see how the other presentations are going. And then this way I can gauge if the facilitators are being, uh, like how tough the facilitators are. So yeah, this is, I'm gonna listen now. Okay. Um, so treatment modification points, but have you made them to the patient? Uh, so, we're, like telling the patient about it? Yeah. Are you a healthcare provider? Yes, we are. Hey guys, so I finished treatment planning seminar and then I hopped on a quick Zoom call with a different PBL group. It's like this trigeminal neuralgia PBL group. I don't know, it's a little bit confusing, but we hopped on a Zoom call really quick to discuss our project because it's due today. And then I made a sandwich in the meantime, and now I'm eating it. So it seems like I have a little bit of a break because I don't have my next PBL class until 2 p.m. It's so weird that I have so many PBL classes in one day. Uh, respirations, 19 breaths per minute, temperature 97.6. Uh, no cardiovascular disorder, no respiratory disorder, no musculoskeletal or CNS disorder. There's a 10 here on number 21. Seven there, seven, ten, six, seven. So the pockets that are really uh, deep. All right, so I just finished my last PBL case of the day. It was called Periodontal Days, and this PBL is a, li a lot different than our other PBL cases. I don't know if we're the first year that is doing this, but it seems like it is. So it seems like PBL is changing. It seems to be a lot better this way. So we still read over a case, but instead of finding our own research and going out and looking in online books and um, looking for the information by finding our own research, the research is already given to us. So I'm given a topic and the research article that I'm supposed to read, where I'm supposed to find all my information is already given to me. So I'm just supposed to read that article, write a one to two page summary, and then a different partner in my PBL group will present it. And then I'll read a different person's PBL summary and then present their summary. Um, this is my first time doing it though. So it seems to be a better way of learning. So I'm glad that the school's like adapting to the way we learn and things like that. Good morning, it is Wednesday. Today I am hopefully going to be doing scaling and root planing. It is about 7.30, so I'm gonna go hurry up and set up because my partner is running a little bit late. Um, although that's me usually all the time and he's always set up before me, so I can't be mad at all. Hello, I just finished up with my day. So today I actually got some procedures done, which is great. I did scaling and root planing of both upper left and lower left quads and I also injected some anesthesia. I did the AMSA injection uh, for the first time and it went great. The patient said that they didn't feel anything, which was great <laughs> um, because I haven't injected in a long time. I just got home, just changed out of my scrubs and I'm about to have lunch, I'm super hungry. So yesterday was my sister's birthday and we went out for dinner. So I'm going to be having my leftover enchiladas for lunch. Um, but you guys, tomorrow is supposed to be the first day that I'm gonna do an operative procedure. Today is the day, you guys. Today is the first day I do my first crown prep, my first operative procedure. I'm more excited than nervous. Um, I really hope 
this works out. I really hope that the patient comes, that the patient pays, that it was treatment planned right, you know? Oh my gosh, we did it, we did it. Oh my gosh, you guys, we did it, I did it. I did my first operative procedure today. It actually worked out. I didn't throw up. I only cried a little. Um, everything was fine. The patient wasn't scared. Oh my gosh, I, I can't believe it. I'm so excited. <sighs> okay, so let me tell you how it went. So the original plan for today was to do uh, a core buildup. We might have had to put post. We didn't know. We were going to ask the faculty. And then we were going to do a rough crown prep and then put a provisional crown on it and then send the patient to get crown lengthening with grad pros at their next appointment. So we didn't exactly do that. And the reason is because the tooth, like the, whatchamacallit, the margins of the tooth were already by the gingiva. Like, what was I going to prep? I would have had to cut the gingiva basically so the faculty thought that it was better to get the crown lengthening done first and then to prep the crown okay so I still did something today I did uh, a core buildup and that involved drilling the tooth drilling the temporary Fuji out of the tooth and then restoring it with composite um, it was exciting. It really was not that bad. To be honest, in the very beginning, I was kind of freaking out just because I didn't know like what note to make. Um, I didn't know we were gonna need composite. I thought we were gonna use this thing called Paracore because that's kind of what I reviewed before. I reviewed how to do a post and core buildup. So just like the little changes, I was just flustered. And then uh, my partner, was gone a little bit because he had to translate or he had to like do some other things um and I really rely on him for support so I like texted him saying like hey are you still busy I need you to help me <laughs> so when he like came back um I had some tears in my eyes to be honest I didn't know anyone could notice but he like looked at me he looked at me and he's like are you okay and I was like yeah now that you're here like <laughs> I'm better so I just had to breathe a little bit and then um, once we started, like once I was drilling, it was fine. Like I was like, wow, I can, I can do this. Like this really isn't that bad. So that was, uh, that was very exciting. Like I was confident. I was not nervous to do the procedure. I was not nervous while I was doing the procedure. I was nervous before uh, just because I... I don't know I was more nervous for like the injection and to be honest I didn't even have to inject because the tooth was already root canal treated so we didn't even use any anesthesia so I removed the temporary filling which is called Fuji and then I removed the cotton roll because this tooth had endo treatment so they put a cotton roll they put Fuji on top so then when it gets its permanent restoration we know where to stop drilling we stop drilling when we reach the cotton so I removed that and then I etched, primed, bonded, light cured, and put increments of composite and then light cured. And now the patient is going to get crown lengthening and then I'll prep the crown and then we'll do a crown. So yeah, today was successful. I'm proud of myself. Um, I just need to breathe a little bit more and be a little bit more confident because one of my worst fears is to like cry in front of a patient or just like show weakness or like show that I'm scared in front of a patient because I for sure know that that's going to make the patient scared. Like you can't have their doctor be like that. But thinking about it makes me more worried so I just have to stop thinking about it and just be confident because it's just unnecessary. Good morning, it is Friday. I'm on my way to school. I'm going to assist in the endo department this morning and then I will be assisting my benchmate in the afternoon. I thought endo assisting started at eight, but apparently it starts at 8.30. I guess the endo patient canceled, so there's nothing for me to do. Okay, so that was kind of a waste. It is like, 9 a.m. and I came to assist in endo because you know I signed up 
but the patient canceled or I guess there's just not enough patients so we just waited an hour and um, I wish I didn't wake up so early to come to school to assist an endo because I didn't get to assist anyways so I'm thinking of going home but too bad I live kind of far away hey guys so I just came back home I just couldn't stay at school for that long because there's not much to do uh, during COVID times because I can't just go to a coffee shop and like work on my learning need or just go assist in a different department because there are rules like social distancing rules. So I decided it'd be easier to come back home even though it was like a 30 minute drive. Mm. Um, I posted a video, it's about plants. <laughs> kind of a random video and I might get like a little power nap in before I have clinic in the afternoon I'm just going to be assisting my benchmate and yeah that's pretty much the end of the week it's already Friday all right it is Friday afternoon today was kind of a pointless day I got to school didn't have a patient because my assistant's patient canceled so I was helping around just running around for a little bit and then I went down to the endo clinic to see if I can assist. They said yes, but the tooth that we were working on uh, is unrestorable. So there was caries like by the furcation area of the tooth. So we didn't do anything. <laughs> this was a productive week overall. So I'm glad that it's done. I'm excited for next week. Hopefully next week will be productive as well. Okay, thank you guys for watching. I hope, um, I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day and I'll see you guys next time.